Well, let's get started. Hi, I'm Peter Robinson. Um, I'm here to talk about um, IoT on Fedora, um, where we are, where we're going. Uh, I was When I originally proposed this talk a couple of months ago, um, the intention was to actually have a shiny demo. Um, but the Fedora gods haven't been on my side and everything's a little bit up in flames along pretty much with some of F27. So not quite where I wanted to be, but you know, so it's useful to have a sort of general discussion about where we're going anyway, um, get some questions, some ideas. Uh, feel free to sort of ask questions as we go along and I'll do my best to answer them as best as possible. Um, so this is roughly what I'm going to go through. Um, as I mentioned, not quite where I'd like to be. Um, planning on using Atomic on multi-arch. Again, we're not quite where we need to be there. Um, and various network and software stacks and things like that that I've been um, working towards and testing. Um, so, so the general idea is uh, three architectures, x86, ARM 64, and ARM 32, um, with a few proposed sort of demo platforms. Um, it won't be hard to these devices. It'll run on Fedora or any of the Fedora stuff, um, and potentially even like VMs and Docker and various other images as well. Um, but um, originally was planning on using a slightly different x86 uh, dev platform with Intel's changes around their IoT architecture platforms. We've had to adjust that slightly. Um, did I mention we weren't quite where I wanted to be? Uh, so, and um, Raspberry Pi, some 96 boards. Um, hopefully in the next few months we should have some cool announcements with the 96 board guys about some platforms there as well. Um, Pine 64 and you know various other Fedora devices. Um, network hardware stacks, uh, Bluetooth LE, uh, Bluetooth Mesh was just announced and all the bits are just going into the kernel and various user space utilities at the moment. Um, so um, before too long we'll be able to use that as well. Um, 802.15.4 um, and potentially different software stacks that sit on top of that like Thread, uh, RS-485 and Modbus which has been some interesting use cases that have come up recently for a fantastic technology from the 1970s. Um, CAN and then others like you know Z-Wave, Industrial I.O. directly on the Linux device and various other bits and pieces. Um, from a software stack point of view, um, nothing major yet actually in Fedora. A lot of these stacks are moving quite fast and have all sorts of vast arrays of dependencies. No dread, um, literally thousands of dependencies. Um, so there's been various discussions how we would package that up and consume it because some of the lower level packages, it's taken me months to get a few reviews here and there. Um, no dread, we would literally have to do thousands. So do we just do that in one big fat bundled RPM or do we just use NPM um, and consume it directly into a Docker container. So there are sort of discussions around content sets and various other bits and pieces that the distribution is having as a whole at the moment. So with things like modularity and those sort of components being discussed, I'm sort of holding off packaging some of that until some of the discussions around content sets mm -hmm. and various other bits and pieces mm -hmm. have some sort of direct decisions. and. There's been a number of different discussions with different interested people um, about how things like machine learning and AI interacts with IoT. So uh, TensorFlow, um, there's an open source Mycroft, a stack called Mycroft, which is similar to Google Home, um, Amazon Echo style things, uh, and, and various other sort of, um, sort of intelligent bits and pieces that can interact with IoT in different ways. So, so there's lots of interest about lots of 
different things, but you know, where I've been over the last few months um, more about getting the low layer core bits and pieces into place to build these stacks on top of it. Um, and of course, from a home, um, like from an industrial point of view, there was a recent announcement around a product out of Dell called Edge X, which has a lot of corporate interest in it, but it's a little bit like OpenStack that when it was first released, it was a massive big code dump, and I personally think it's probably going to be a couple of years away before that goes from a um, sort of a code dump out of a company to a usable sort of software stack community sort of thing that's sort of, and then you know, from a home point of view, which is not so much my focus, but I know a lot of people are interested in, there's things like Home Assistant and, and stuff like that. And again, um, I've not tested that on Fedora, and I don't believe stuff like that's packaged in Fedora, and similarly probably has vast chunks of dependencies around it. Um, and so similarly, um, I think it'll be useful to look at how we can consume that and make sure the IoT stuff in Fedora um, we'll run that stuff from a container point of view or similar to that, but not necessarily packaged directly into Fedora because of the vast amount of work around it and the fact that it's changing and moving fairly quickly. Um, so time frames. Um, plan on having so something to kick the tires in the F27 time frame. Um, there's a bunch of components and uh, dependencies that have already landed into Fedora 26. Things like ARM 64 bit SBCs, uh, so running on 96 boards and Raspberry Pi and Pi 64 and stuff like that, um, is already. Uh, and similarly, I was hoping to, um, I should hopefully be able to demo that tomorrow um, in my ARM talk, um, where we're going in that sort of direction. So if you're interested in that side of things, um, come to my talk tomorrow. Um, and then once we get the initial sort of atomic multi-arch release in um, place as part of Fedora Playgrounds, um, we'll sort of start doing a similar to the atomic two-week release, um, but we'll probably do a more monthly release uh, so, so that we can roll up, you know, patches and fixes and features and what have you that we've landed in. Uh, and then hopefully, um, as the Fedora CI platform um, starts to stabilize and get more functionality in place, we'll be able to use um, some of that as part of like CI, CD pipeline, interacting with some of our sort of ported platforms or in, in VMs and Docker containers to be able to um, automate as much of the testing as possible. Uh, so where is the conversation sort of happening? Well, it's a little bit quiet at the moment, but we have a IoT uh, Fedora IoT channel on Freenode and an IoT list, and um, just generally some bunch of different other standard Fedora locations. And has anyone got any questions? Yes. Uh, <laughs> that is a very good. Um, so I'm getting into place a lot of things like the Atomic Compose and stuff like that, and we've had some dependency issues there around multi-arch, and some of the uh, multi-arch team has helped out and we've fixed some of that, so I'm hoping that should almost uh, be there. Um, it depends a little bit on what you're interested in. Um, I should probably actually put up a wiki page with a, this is what we're doing and this is what needs to be done, so that I can consolidate that in my own head so that people can better help out. Uh, so the question is, am I interested in other architectures like Raspberry Pi? Uh, Raspberry Pi is an ARM architecture and it was, um, will be one of the, because they're very popular, um, it's one of the proposed platforms. Well, it, it, so the proposed platforms are more like reference architectures is probably the best. So these are the ones that we'll be testing and integrating into CI and things like that. So it's not to say that something like a banana pie or some other 
um, arm-based devices or any of the arm-based devices such as a beagle bone or what have you won't work perfectly fine. It's just that we won't necessarily be doing all the testing on those. Correct. Yeah, so proposed platform is probably better off reference architecture. I'm jet lagged and I only did the slides not that long ago. <laughs> uh, so these are more reference architectures as opposed to IoT things um, like sensors and stuff like that. What sort of sensors and things like that are, I won't, I'll say best supported? Um, so this is some of the stuff that I've been getting into place in Fedora 26, so things like device overlays to support something like, say, the Raspberry Pi Sense Hat, which has a bunch of sensors on board. Um, the industrial I.O. drivers have, like, literally hundreds or even thousands of drivers in there. Um, some of the interfaces, so a lot of the, like, generic libraries that go between the software and like the sensors are well dreadful basically there's there's like 20 different libraries to do it and in a lot of cases like I mean one of the most promising ones is like MRAA slash UPM which is two library sort of stacks from Intel uh, but the UPM stuff recreates a whole bunch of um, the drivers for sensors in user space where they already have kernel space drivers in place. So a, a bunch, and then there's a couple of libraries like libiio, which is relative, but I mean, for example, the kernel has a temperature industrial IO thing where they have a unified interface where you can query any of the sensors that may be available and get temperature back in a standardized format. Um, so why there's not a library with Python bindings and other such things that just say, give me a list of the temperature centers and what they're recording, I'm not sure. Um, and that's, um, and, and like, you know, the industrial IO has temperature, um, analog to digital conversion, like hundreds and hundreds of different sensor types in there. Um, but there's just, at the moment, the vast majority of the, there's like dozens of different libraries to interface with them and most of them are terrible. And like similarly like with Bluetooth LE for example, there's a standardized GAT server standard that is part of the Bluetooth spec and there's a whole bunch of stuff around that. So temperature, you know, human body stuff, so like fit the spans and things like that. So, and it has like diction, Shinaries about read this thing and you will get this data if it's available. Yet there's about 20 different Python bindings for it, and most of them pretty much just wrap the like the Bluetooth command line interface, where and yeah, are just dreadful. So that kind of space is yeah interesting, and, and um, I think so. I did a bunch of um, clean up and enablement around some of the kernel stuff but <coughs> like as in the Fedora kernel config for the IIO stuff um, to standardize some of our sensors there in F26 there probably needs to be more done but like in the case of the Raspberry Pi sense hat three out of the four sensors need patches that haven't that I've started to write to get them to work um, and this ends up going down rabbit hole so it, it's that space is quite interesting. There's a lot of stuff there and it's improving quickly, but you know, there's also still a lot of work to be done. Peter, can you talk a little bit more about uh, Atomic and how you see it working out in the IoT space and what some of the benefits and challenges are there? Um, so it's, one of the nice things about Atomic is that it's read only, or primarily read-only file system, you, you can upgrade it in a single snapshot. If that upgrade doesn't work, you can roll it back. Um, so in theory, so recently there was a lock company 
that managed to brick a whole bunch of locks by shipping out the wrong firmware. And uh, basically, the option people have there is to ship back part of the lock to get the firmware fixed. Um, so you shouldn't be able to get into that situation. Um, and, you know, so the plan is there basically to have, similar to what the, in Fedora 26, the Atomic guys are now just moving from F26 to F27 to F28, and it all just becomes one stable release channel. And so basically that was always my plan in that regard. Um, we do basically monthly releases, and it's like, you know, 1701, 1702, 1703, and it just rolls from F26 to F27 to F28, so that devices out there that are running it can just keep moving forward. And the intention with the base IoT OS image is to have just enough. So there's not like so something like a server install or a workstation install which has thousands and thousands of packages there that potentially, it's a much smaller package set. Um, so you know things like glibc and things like that are a lot more stable. So it's not the upgrade pain um, to jump from a release that may be say the GNOME stuff where they quite often change APIs and things like that regularly. What are some of the challenges you've run into there and why, why, why haven't we seen more out of, out of Atomic and IoT? Uh, probably my biggest challenge there is time. Uh, so as part of my role, this is part of my role, but other parts of my role include um, evangelize, so speaking at conferences, uh, speaking internally, uh, speaking with customers and partners and, and bits and pieces. So it, it, the biggest challenges I've found to date are time. Um, and also we don't quite have all the multi-art stuff in place yet. Um, so it's been working to get a bunch of that in place so that we can compose a single release across multiple architectures. But again, that's almost there. Uh, so the question is about FPGAs, and yes, there is definitely interest in there. Uh, similarly, there's um, a bunch of interest around, so OpenCL, sort of GP, GPU sort of stuff, so TensorFlow, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, there, I've had a number of conversations where FPGA, um, GP, GPU, and that style of compute is certainly of interest because, um, like, I think one of the classic examples around that sort of space is like image recognition. So there's, you know, whether it's identifying a vehicle versus a bird at a gate or an animal at a gate versus, I don't know, detecting trains at a crossing or a number of plates and things like that. The ability to do like a certain level of AI at the device so that they can independently make decisions about stuff without having to go up into the cloud or just simply because of speed and time and stuff like that. So like in a self-driving car, the latency of going back to make a decision and going, what do I do now? And then coming back to the car, well, there could well have been an accident sort of thing. So um, there's certainly for certain workloads, especially sort of more in, I suppose, the industrial space, but as opposed to like the home space, there's certainly a lot of interest in um, all sorts of like offload and acceleration, whether it be a FPGA or GP, GPU sort of stuff. Any more questions? That's the back. And this is the first 15 minutes. Can you just do it again? <laughs> <laughs> it's a video recording. Okay, I'll take the video. Thank you. No more questions? Thank you. <laughs>